Tan 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 tan, 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 tan 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 tan. You know, I can't even hide my excitement with this episode. Are you excited? That's, this is me excited right now because I don't know why I have to slip it so fucking hard, bro. You, you wonder what? I don't know. I don't know why you have to slip it so hard. That's how I slip it all the time. So no, that's not how you slip it all the time. Can you have a bit of respect? <laughs> Happy. Anyway, I, I was saying I can't. I, I feel like dancing right now because of uh, the level of a guest we have today. Go ahead. And. I don't, know, I, don't, I don't know why I'm a bit nervous. This, this man is a legend. He's been in the industry so long. I've got so much respect for him, so much admiration for how he's carried himself over the years where he gave us so many great albums, so many great performances, and he's been in the industry scandal-free, if I may add. And wherever he goes, he commands such respect from fans, from artists alike. Ladies and gentlemen, put, please put your lovely hands together for Danny Kaya, Danny Masikwonse, Danny Yakumboyo, Danny Ten Years, a man whose name changes every album. How do you even keep up with what, that? Like Diddy? <laughs> worse. <laughs> worse than Diddy. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's, uh, yeah. it's the way it is. I think it's how I started the industry. Yeah. Probably... I can't say it was a mistake. I decided to name myself a common name. Danny. So you gave yourself that name? As in, yes. Because my name is Daniel. Oh, right, 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 yeah, right, right. So I didn't know that. To make it more musical, I said Danny. But little Danny, Danny that guy. did I forget that, you see, Danny is everywhere. It could be Danny Hood, Danny the musician, Danny the, the plumber, Danny the electrician <laughs> and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, so eventually when people want to relate, yeah, they have to oh umuziwa when did Danny Danny with Iwe Danny Masikwons. Yeah. Oh Danny Yakumbu. Yeah. Then you see that, oh okay. Probably had I caught myself nasty D. Black nasty D. Too. You know what I mean? Wait, you wanna call yourself nasty D? <laughs> I'm giving you an example <laughs> of how great those names are. In terms of music, when you have a name, a name no, no, no. You see, the problem Elson has with that name yeah. is oh, the problem what, I have. Why are there so many D's in the industry? They slap D, nasty D. What's up with these D's? Danny D, Danny D. You could have been Danny D. Yeah, you yeah, see, yeah. <laughs> you still have a problem with the D's? <laughs> no, I'm okay with it. <laughs> Throw some D's on there. <laughs> so anyway, Danny. Yeah. Um, another name that you're known by nowadays, Shiniza. Mm -hmm. You you only have one child. Uh, when I did that song, when I brought that yeah. album out, where I mentioned the name of my daughter, yeah. but then I had one. Now I have three. One, one girl, two boys. And speaking of uh, Niza, mm -hmm. what is the water, man? Like you, 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 you have a water oh, brand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah, he yeah. actually makes water like Vox. Oh, work? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he calls actually, it Shiniza mm -hmm. after the, the daughter, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. What happened on that project is that it's still there. Okay. We just had to hold it because initially it was more of an experiment. Right. I wanted to see how the people would receive it and it looks very interesting. Trust me, I got a few consultations, a few orders that I realized I couldn't handle. So I said, uh-uh, take -uh. anya. Right. Make this big. As I speak now, we've been over a year or so been buying in correct machinery coming in slowly, bit by bit. And yeah. We're now doing up the plant at the farm. So by the end of the year, it will be back. I, I, need, to, I need to push this for that. <laughs> no, no, yeah, a lot of respect, man, because mm -hmm. I think we, we spoke about this, and I, I can't remember which episode where we spoke about artists and investing, and you know, your name is there one day, another time it's not. So I'm, I'm trying to understand, for you, what was the logic behind putting... She needs a water together. Is it something like a like a retirement plan when the music doesn't work anymore? Yeah, I would say more of a retirement plan. You see, as an artist, you are there to create a name, but and then what? Music is dynamic. Mm. There'll come a time when there'll be somebody you won't be making those shows the way you were making when your time was there. Right. Then two, when you create a brand, 
what do you use it for i did my research i realized most artists out there in the world all over the world they have a lot of products and it's nice when you have a good fan base they can relate to it and uh, it takes you somewhere you know what i mean apart from music so to me it's one dream i thought if i started it would also inspire many other artists to to think outside the box of music because definitely you cannot sing forever there comes a time when like now three kids needs has finished school no way would it cheap but yeah 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 bali exe yeah that you me wow woman i don't know why in my mind whenever i hear she needs i always imagine needs being a small person you yeah, know what i mean yeah i think it's because she was introduced like that yeah she's actually how old are you my daughter 17 She completed the school last year, she will be 18 this year. Time does fly, man. Yeah, that was 2007 when I brought her name to the limelight. Yeah. And <clears throat> excuse me. You've been in the industry for well over what? 23 years now plus. Yeah, that's on point. Let's say 22 plus because it was first time my music played was in I remember that. December 99 November December 99 This was with Masiko Wanse Masiko Wanse featured DK You you are now doing things like uh, Shiniza Water and mm-hmm. for me that's a very responsible move from an artist I'm trying to understand the mindset that Danny from 1999 2000 had because you were nowhere to the businessman you are today What kind of a young guy were you coming in the game were you as excited as all of us are when you know you start enjoying a bit of fame what, what was it like coming in the industry then you see when you start music like for me um i started at the tender age to play around with music write songs i think from grade 9 somewhere in 90 93 94 yeah, somewhere just, there just about elson yeah about the same age yeah. as elson yeah I'll be- <laughs> <laughs> so i yeah. come back yanko yeah you can call him yanko <laughs> Don't listen to this fool. <laughs> so when I started, you know, yeah. you'd play around with lyrics here and there. Then my aim actually was <laughs> just to prove that I think I could do this. Let me just do one song that people will love and enjoy mm. and I'll be cool with it. Right. Trust me, that was my introduction. But then I was listening too much but then uh, the late Daddy Zimas was like he's the one who changed my my line of thought. Before that we would be writing songs in English. Some of us listen too much to reggae Jamaican music so you want to be like yeah because fan. Zambians didn't quite like Zambian music yeah and, the, and the, most of the Zambian music we had on the market then was Kalindula mm-hmm. which was uh, what was dominating the mm-hmm. so to have anyone singing the local language like that is Emus yeah we were all mind blown with uh, what was the album again and no it was subtitled yeah the no the, there his, was this uh, Salaula there was the, the, oh the, yeah the yeah. other one came the Chibaba album and all that now that's the one that just tipped yeah Chibaba yeah. just went off So when I listened to him I said okay this can be nice I tried to write a few songs and I said okay this is making sense then I told myself let me just do one song which I believe people will listen to will love and I'm good from that time on what what song was this Masiku ones Masiku ones um you know Masiku was that's 90 late 1990 yeah late 1990 how much of your life changed after that a lot you A lot of things change. Mm. Suddenly people are listening to you, suddenly people are looking at you, suddenly you get favors. Probably just <laughs> even said, "Okay, probably this is a calling that God has given me. Let me try and pursue a career as a music man." Mm. And see what happens. The rest is history. What what direction were you taking in your life before that? Like, you know, you're you're saying when, after you did my sequence is when you like sort of figure out this is the direction you want to take. But what which direction were you going? before that happened two directions mm. music i knew i would do it because i right. started way back so i said i would do this for fun but before that i was in i i i did a course in electrical engineering oh serious yeah yeah i had a diploma in, in electrical engineering i majored in power mama zesco zesco lord shedding that's us <laughs> <laughs> all right cool and um my family by then like dad was not really for the idea that i do music It was a very tough one when we were starting. As every responsible African Yo, parent is going to tell you. My friend. By then it was even worse. I mean, yeah, they're going to tell you for failures in yeah. Zambia. Yeah. So but um 
after I finish my college, I see, okay, boss. I'm a college and I'm pushing now muri pila kena. Try out something that I want. Yeah. And see what I feel this can fulfill my my passion just for and then I can do something even in electrical and whatever. Then he said, "Well, me as your parent, you're done with your secondary school, you're done with your college, whatever you do now it's up to you, you can fly." Mm. So my focus was that I would do music, but maybe on a part-time then I'll go into my electrical field and all those things. Then somehow time never allowed everything just changed. I found myself into music full time. That's interesting. Man. If ni- you said Niza finished school last year, is she already in college? No, no, no. She'll be going to college in June. So what, what is she going to study? She wants to do accounts. And if she came home tonight and told her dad, I, want, I don't want to do accounts. I think I want to do music as well. Yeah. Firstly, I would. Oh, ad- what mm-hmm. would you say? Firstly, I would advise her. Yeah. Do you have the music in you? Does she? That's the question. <laughs> She yeah. loves music. Amazingly, she even listened to music as way ba- as way back as Bobby Brown. Then I'm like, how? That's how much she loves music. She loves to sing along. The young brother, he loves music. He plays keyboard, he plays and I've always supported that. Because I believe music is something once you're empowered, it can be in you. It can be a sidekick. Mm. It may not be your main thing, but once you're empowered with it, kuntang all life ya vuta. You can always go back because that's a God-given talent. If Nisa came back, first I'll wait. I'll say, mm, music, can you sing? She's lucky. I'm there. I'll try to listen to her music, what she's trying to sing. If it's honest, I'll tell her, I'm going to dance with her. 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 Cleo. And the like. Yeah. Something like that. Anything you want to add also? Mm-hmm. Nothing. Mm-mm. You're awfully quiet. Today. I'm worried, man. No, I'm, I'm, I'm paying attention, bro. When, when, when legends speak, you don't just butt in with your nonsense. No, I was worried. I thought maybe needed like uh, some magnesium. You look constipated. Oh, wait. Oh, really? that, that's just my resting bitch face. I'm good, bro. <laughs> resting bitch. Let me out of this. <laughs> yeah, so from Masiku once then, what, 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 what point do you then feel like, okay, you know what? Yeah, quite, quite right you've mentioned Masiku once is the one that makes you feel like, you know what, I can step into this. But then, uh, Masquance was, al- was an album, right? Yeah, yeah. It what, was, what uh, that? I, can't, I can't remember one okay. song. Yeah. The album was titled Mvelani. Yeah. There were yeah, songs yeah. like, Big Up, Big Up, da, na, 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 Ash Chibaba. When I was giving a tribute to all Zambian music by then, yeah. there were songs like, Ngoma Ikari, La Vila Mwainviri, You can't feel it. And I'm, you call yourself a DJ. <laughs> No, I'm, I'm trying to remember which songs these are. Maybe, maybe if I hear the beats. Those are the three main songs on from that first album, Masiku Onze, Ngo Maikarila, Big Up. Because I remember on the local rhythms countdown, Big Up was like number and one. And you guys, your beats from that period were so weak, man. Like those, like no one to master. Your beats were so was, weak. Because even Masiku Onze it, it, was it, it, a hit was, song, but it was Ganyav, as we called it. <laughs> <laughs> you had to do with what? <sighs> Is there? Like also, I'm telling you, if you listen to these songs right now, sounds like elevator music. It's terrible. It's like shit. when you compare to what's on the market right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's shit. It's like what they would, if they want to sedate you in a hospital, <laughs> they would they use that. put you to sleep. <laughs> they would, they would use that. <laughs> and it would work. <laughs> no. Yes. An anesthetic in music. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that album had like three uh, songs that you'd say came out. Came out of it that really people were able to relate. There's even like a song, man, too many coffee, just about the girl child going to school. I think these four, these four really came well, out like, of it and that's where I saw it to say, okay, fine. This wait, looks like it. Osani Sule comes out in which one? Osani Sule was on a compilation, on a Roman side compilation. Do, 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 yeah, do, do, do. That was about the time when I was doing the Yaku. Actually, Osani Sule was a left out song from the Yakumbuya album. No way. Yeah. That was the Yakumbuya album. No, Yakumbuya. And why I left it out, I couldn't get the beat right. I wrote it, I made my own beat. Yeah. But I could feel that the lyrical content was quite interesting, but what? the beat wasn't. Until TK did it. So his. the time, my time for publishing was going, I said, okay, fine, let me leave it out. Then I took the Yakumbuya for publishing. And I got the beat, the song, and they said, TK, what can you do to this? 
then he came up with that. I just said, oh, oh, crap. No, that's what I was looking for. <sighs> Dude, so, so when you're making a song, what hits you first? Do you get the concept of, of the lyrics or do you hear a beat and then you then come up with the lyrics? How do you, how do you compose a... A song, we compose music differently, but uh, above all, it's all about inspiration. Sometimes you'll be inspired by a beat Sometimes by a lyric, sometimes by just a sound. Mm. So there's no rule that first you make a beat, then you write a song. Sometimes I remember when I did a song from the second album, the first album is the song, We Share My Love. Do you know how that chorus came up? Yeah. I was in town, in Stanley Bar. <laughs> I don't know what happened there, and then... I think I was in the, in the gents or something. Yeah. Then I sang something and I, I liked it. I, just, mm. I kept singing it until I went home. When I got home, I played with it a bit. I started building it and I left it. So you can't really know how a song will come up. It's more inspired by a lot of things. So there's no template, I would say. There's a guy in Zim called Ja Prazer. Mm-hmm. Have you heard about him? Too much. I love him. Have you heard how he comes up with the songs? He's the one who comes up with, how. with them in dreams? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's very common as well. So he 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 owes his creativity to to his ancestors that okay. he yeah. either gets in a trance or he comes in a dream. <clears throat> so when he wakes up down to the key, he knows exactly. So when he calls TK or a producer, he tells him, "This is the tone that I need you to." to use so down to the tiny little detail is already given to him so when he even the songs so when he then like gets in a booth and he lays down a song he then listens back to it and then begins to sort of recite it and begin to understand it almost kind of like when he sings it it's not it's not him or it's not his like there's a spirit that's singing True. these songs for yeah. him and there's actually a song too I'll, I'll show you the video it's called Goto when when he performs it so 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 he made this song to sort of appease the ancestors to thank them right um when he performs this song live there are certain people like in this room i don't know if you've noticed i don't know if if you've if you've realized this where there are people with i don't know if, if i don't know if i can call it a gift where an ancestor can speak through a person they don't choose any person they can just go through one person they can go through through Kalenga and speak through Kalenga. And normally when that happens, it, it's sort of like you, if you know what, like what a, what a Ouija board is, you, you invite them, you, you, you call them and you say, uh, it, it could be an event or if you feel there's something that, they, that you want to say, you put this snuff in your nose, right? And then you are, you get in a trance and then they, they start speaking uh, through you. The point that I'm making is whenever he makes that song and there are people in the crowd that are listening to it, if there are people that have got the gift in them to be channels of this, they get in a trance and they pass out. Mm. Whenever he makes that song, it's, so, it's sort of like a, like a, um, what do you call this? Like a, a, like a calling call. Where if you don't know that you have it in you, you just begin shaking like you've got a seizure and some people begin to vomit some people begin talking in voices that don't belong to them. It's, yeah, it's a scary sight to see, man. Never heard that before? No, but, one, but I understand it. Because I always believe that musical is spiritual. Mm. So it depends on which spirit that you're going to relate it to. Personally, the way you've explained it, I would relate it to the spirit of God. Mm. I've heard those songs before as well, in the night. You dream of a song. Um, you find that maybe I dream like I'm at the show, maybe Raneo is singing, then he sings this nice song, mm. new song, and uh, we love it. Then when I wake up, I find that uh, Raneo has no song like that. So that's my song. <laughs> 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 you get it? But then you don't remember it. Then one day I was watching something from uh, by an interview, Brenda Fassi. She had a small Mabr. recorder by her bedside. Yeah. Every time she would have a dream like that, and she wakes up, Immediately she wake up and record it. Before it leaves you, yeah. Then she can sleep again. So in the morning she's able to 
relate of playback. Yeah, what was happening? He said, oh, "Okay, to me it's more spiritual. God will give you a song or a talent. I believe I'm a vessel God has used to channel whatever He wants to speak to the people through me. So that's the spirit that I believe it for my part is the spirit of God. Mm. I'm a believer. And I know the guy also has like one show in a year." where he doesn't charge people so he goes to his home village mm. and he buys like alcohol and food and invites people and he performs so that's sort of his way of kind of like giving, giving back, back and yeah that's but it's pretty interesting man I've always wondered if there's people that have had instances like that where mm-hmm. just songs just come to them it's the way I, the, the way you say it the same with Shemayelo it just dropped in my spirit in my mind in a toilet though in the toilet Helping myself. What, what was that hand gesture? You know what I mean? Because huh? we're taking was a wondering. peek. <laughs> or was this something else? <laughs> Waste off. Because he didn't tell you what he was doing. He says he was in the gents. <laughs> he says it's worse. So that's how I came up with that. I said, this is interesting. So I got the chorus, went home, recorded it. Yeah. After a few days, started developing the verses. Those are the songs that I know that... Then there's another way... There's what we call, I don't know how many artists use this. It's what we call in my my studio with my boys. We call it na 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 na. No, no nobody knows about that. I've yeah, not, nobody knows about that. Never heard of na na na. No. <laughs> you just go in the studio, you like a beat, put your headphones on, press record. Sounds like kids asking each other for sex. You want some na 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 na? Kids asking for sex? How? Like teens. What kind of pity feel is this? Teens. I said teens. <laughs> When you're a teen, would you say na 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 na? No, I'm saying that's what it sounds like. <laughs> Bro. So you just yeah. press record and you just go with it. You just sing anything. Na 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 na. Some words will come out. Some lyrics will come out. Na na na. There are songs we have written in reverse. When you mm. listen to that now, when we have and then you're like, okay. Then there'll be a part where you find that you said something interesting. Then you like that part. You start building it, building it mm. from the middle. It starts going back. Then the idea starts becoming clear. As you go on again, it becomes clearer. Then you find that a song is being made or being born. So even those me, I and I tell myself, mm. But have you ever had one of those job raiser moments where it's like deep in a dream and the whole song comes ah, to no, you? No, 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 no. Never. never yeah, not been that spiritual. Mm-hmm. But what's what's the I, I know a lot of artists have like a ritual. I'll give an example of Bob Marley. You know, the herb would mm-hmm. give him a lot of these ideas for others. What, 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 what works for you in your creative process? He goes to the gents. <laughs> One. <laughs> <I think so. laughs> One. Yeah. Um, nothing really, I would say, but peace of mind really works for me. And for whatever reason, reasons, like um, one day I was taking analysis of my music. Most of my great, great songs were all written on a Sunday. Wow. I don't know why. Mm. You find that day I'll go into the studio, Sunday, everything would just be flowing, flowing. You would be in the spirit. Some other days I would go the whole day, nothing. Until it's Sunday again. Come Sunday, you go maybe even struggle, you find from 14, then just boom, boom, just something hits you. You start, the creative part opens up. You just start writing. Writing and again, you have to go into the creative part when you are on the road doing shows like for three, four months. You are not recording. When you go back, that's my personal experience. It's not easy to start writing again. You can mm. even struggle for a month, but once it comes, you are now like in the studio mode. It just flows. You just start recording, recording, recording. So I had to look at the times that I'm free. Those are the times I use most for studio. For example, from August to December. Many shows, summer, mm-hmm. but January, February, you're broke, school fees, what, what. <laughs> so time I would use to go in the studio for recording. Cause it's, like when it's like when you've got no money, your yeah. mind is at peace. Now yeah, you can yeah, worry. Tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> when you've got money, you're thinking of how to spend it all uh, the time, yeah? Yeah, probably. How do you manage, bro? Like, you got three kids, right? Mm-hmm. I have one, and Jesus, the expenses, man. Like, now he's just, he, he came back home with a torn track suit. <laughs> um, you pay these exorbitant fees and then now the next thing is he's got a trip and you're just sitting there like did I just pay you guys money? I've also got three kids so I, I know what he goes through. Mm. How do you guys manage this? <sighs> Man. We you know what? Know. The good thing is uh, most of the expenses for me I don't know about you 
but I make sure they happen at different times somehow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? This one was a little stool trip this this month. The other one you find that's not my doing, but when it comes to things that happen at the same time, like school fees, everyone's open to school at the same time. I'll make sure I pay these school fees at different times. Like for January, mm-hmm. I pay for one in October and I pay for the other one in November mm-hmm. so that December I can be in Livingston with you chilling. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Podcasting. Or podcasting in Livingston like we did. <laughs> so uh, that's how I take up my expenses when it comes to the kids. Pay for their expenses at different times, mm-hmm. way before the deadlines arrive. That's how I meant. That's how I Because nobody ever tells you how expensive these little bastards are. <laughs> Yeah. Your own bastard. A champ- your own you bastard. Your own yeah, bastard. my own bastard, man. Ain't <laughs> <laughs> nobody tells you this. <laughs> They're like, uh, so, well, it's, as you said, it's about just planning how you yeah. work with it. Depending on how your income comes in, you should be able to see. Right now, mm. you say you have one. Mm-hmm. You won't be, that I know you of. won't understand us. Yeah. That you know of. Just yeah, bring another one and yeah. another one. Yeah. There will be a way. How? Yeah. I don't know. Me, whenever I hear that, oh, daddy, we are closing school. I'm, I'm never happy because it means now New bills, fees. bills yeah. are coming in. So immediately I go into the mode of working on that. Do you live with them? Oh, yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Married? That's a very, very important question. Yeah, okay. Yeah, well, you don't, you don't he, hear that a lot. Yeah? <laughs> he, he's not married, so he doesn't know what, what we go through. I don't know. No, he doesn't know what we go through when it comes to you calling your wife. She's not picking up five missed calls. You go home and you find her in the living room. Phone is in the bedroom. I'm sure you go through the same Watching thing. Watching Zuba. Watching Zuba. <laughs> phone is in the bedroom. And you start wondering, somebody went through so much hard work, so many pains to get the cable off a phone to make it a mobile phone. And somebody leaves it in the bedroom all day, every day. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I, I keep saying this to you, Galenga. I don't know how you guys do it. <laughs> how long have you been married, bro? 17 years. 17 years? My daughter's life. He's about to ask marriage. you, on purpose? But why would you do this to yourself? <laughs> why would you die? <laughs> Give me a good reason why I shouldn't. <sighs> okay, so. I've been you. You're yet to be me. You say what? <laughs> I've been you. Uh-huh. You're yet, yet to, to be, be me. Him. Yeah, I, I hear that. Uh-huh. And so I'm, I'm trying to put myself in your position where, again, everything that I'm going to say about marriage is purely theory because i've never been married but i feel like more people that are not married now do not actually want to get married i I feel like marriage is very easy to get into but very difficult to get out of because there's a lot of stuff that you have to go through to leave and so a lot of people that are stuck in marriages are not not because they they want to be there but because of the stress that they have to go through <clears throat> you have to split assets you have to involve families mm-hmm. you have to go through all this so you end up putting with a lot of bs where if you really take account and if you if you really take stock and you think like when really genuinely was i happy i, I don't i don't know i love I, da- know. I love danny's wisdom let him explain to you something about what you just said <laughs> i like that my take about that is that yeah. the first few years of marriage, I think, are the worst. The, fi- they, the first five. They look like the best. Because, yeah. I mean, we'll be showing you guys what you want to see. Mm. But yeah. one, these are two people <clears throat> coming from two different course, homes, yeah. two different cultures. Two different backgrounds. Trying to live together mm-hmm. in one home. It is very, very difficult. But I think as time goes on, you start letting loose it's about accommodating your friend i can be very stubborn my wife knows that mm-hmm. but now i can tell how stubborn i was and how stubborn i am now it's very different mm. even how she she was a different person now she's a different person mm. so it's like you start maturing for a common cause eventually you and be, what's the common cause the common cause is that you have to be happy together with your with your kids yeah there's nothing very interesting and very nice when you live together with your kids. Your kids must be happy in life. I'll, I'll tell you one thing. One of my sons went to school and came and asked me a question. I don't know how you would answer it. Came and said, ah, Daddy, today my friend asked me that. How does it feel to have a father? What? You heard that's what the friend asked him. Yes. How does it feel to have a father? How does it feel to have a father? Then I was like, mm, that's deep. 
Because it means when they go there, they are playing. This one will be saying, oh, I know my father took me where I mean my dad. Yeah, but that's a yeah. child maybe being raised by a single mother. Mm. So he has no idea what it is to live with a father figure in the home. So those are things that make you even to be strong and realize that, look, you brought these human beings on earth. It's your responsibility. Yes, If yes. you made a mistake how you brought them, those are your details. It's got nothing to do with them. It's got yeah. nothing to do with them. Yeah. So now you, they're here. You have to take up. If you messed it up, it's like you kill somebody, you go to jail. Yeah. If you did it right, you are lucky, you strike a jackpot, everything is smooth. I'm in. Man, but, I, I, I got, but I got, it's I got not a, easy. That's a fact. It's not easy. I got a similar situation at home just last week where my daughter walks into the living room and my wife and I are seated there. And, and then she, she said, what does it feel like to have a father? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. She, I, I don't know where she heard something or yeah, what, where she saw something, but she asked the mom saying, she made, I think it's in her classroom. Was it a church? I can't remember if it was Sunday school or, or whichever, but one of, her, one of her classrooms that she attends. And she asked the mother, this person, she mentioned the name and she says, she's supposed to have no mom and dad. Mm. So who buys her toys? You know what I mean? So we both freeze like, mm-hmm. okay, so that's an orphan. How do we explain this to a five-year-old? But I'm happy you brought that up because... Wait, now, can, I, I'll, yeah? can, can I just finish the yeah, sentence? Yeah, sure, of course. Yeah, of course. so we, we start thinking, how do we explain this to her? So we say, look... Uh, you know what dying is? Yeah, so the, both mommy and daddy died. So uh, we're not sure where she gets her toys from. So she went to the bedroom, got all her toys. And she's, and the mommy explained saying, most of the kids who grew up like that are in orphanages. They put them like in a big school. She tried to describe what an orphanage looks like. And my daughter's like, so they've got no mommy, no daddy. It's like, yeah, no. So they keep them like in a school. Like, it's almost like a boarding school. And you could see her almost tearing up, trying to imagine kids living without mommy wow. and daddy. Mm. Yeah. So now she gets all her toys and she wants to find an orphanage to give all these toys to because so, these kids are growing up without parents who can buy them toys. Which one is my favorite? Which no, no, one? the older one. Oh, okay. no, I don't, like, I don't like her as much. <laughs> I like the smaller one. But, but you know what? That's, yeah. that's, that's pure. Yeah. Because with so kids, she wants, She's looking for an orphanage to give away all her toys because she's got a big ass box full of toys. And that's sweet. And yeah. you should actually take her. Like, like, like yeah, so why, why is she looking for an orphanage to take these toys to? Yeah. And, and because kids, when they're that age, they're pure. You can't corrupt kids. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And this is like, even when we speak about, about racism and all this, we always say like racism is taught because nobody's mm-hmm. born that way. You mm-hmm. instill these values. And more to your point, and, uh, and uh, I think it was your son who came to ask you, mm-hmm. Yeah. I've always felt like I had this discussion with a, with a, with a mate of mine. Uh, I think we were talking about homosexuality and um, the conversation then came where he then said, we were, we, um, I was having lunch with this person and then um, a gay person walks in and the person goes, I hate gay people. And I'm like, why? And it was like, can you imagine if I was sitting here with my daughter and then that person then came in with, well, it was a female. And then that person then came in with, with her girlfriend and they start kissing. And then now my child is seeing two women kissing. And then that, my, my child then asked me, mommy, why are those two women kissing? And then I then said about it and I thought, and I said, you know, I, I've seen what the problem here is. And you handled it pretty well. The problem here is people are so lazy to parent. Now you do not want to have difficult conversations with your child and so you'd rather change the world. You'd rather people don't live their lives the way they live their lives so you don't have to have that conversation with your child. Yeah. In growing up, the way that I grew up is my dad would take certain opportunities if I'm riding around in town with him and he sees a couple walking and the woman is walking on the curbside, you'd be like, you see that? That's wrong because... The guy is supposed to be on the curb side and the woman is supposed to be <laughs> on the other side. Every That's scenario, if he sees a couple arguing, that was his opportunity to speak to me about domestic violence. <laughs> if, so despite what is happening in life, wherever we would go, if anything would happen, you'd be like, so you see what's happening right there? That is wrong because you're supposed to do it A, B, C, and D. So I feel like just like with what happened with, um, with, um, with, uh, with your son uh, and with your daughters, that's like a teachable moment yeah, where true. you then speak about, so you will most likely notice there are kids whose behaviors are different to you mm-hmm. because they don't have a father. They grew up with no father. They've got only a single mom. And so this is what that means, A, B, C, and D. 
So I, I try to be that way as well with my son, uh, where you sort of parent as you go. You don't like <clears throat> sit them down and you're like, okay, cool. So today we are going to speak about these topics, <laughs> sex, drugs, <laughs> violence, uh, domestic violence. And then tomorrow, so five just more look, topics. Look for a teachable moment. Look for a teachable moment. And then that's your opportunity to speak to them about that particular topic. True. True. What, what did that do to you though? The, your son asking you about the friend not having a father. It just took my brain in research and made me to strengthen more my marriage values. Mm. It means that he can easily fall for uh, to be in those shoes if I don't work it out with my wife. Right. You get it? It just yeah. taught me again that we've brought these people. We are lucky that me and my wife are still together. Probably we we have our differences, but we have to push on so that the kids are brought up in an environment that is, um, which we can call in terms of marriage, ideal. Because normally when man, woman, marry, should have children together. I think that's how uh, life was meant to be. But mm. of course, there are a lot of dynamics that create, that come in, you find <clears throat> there's a divorce or it's a child and, and all that. But it just made me to think because I, I couldn't answer them then, you see, because the question is feel. You can't explain a feeling. The question was, how does it feel? Mm -hmm. It's very difficult. You can't explain somebody else's feeling. I guess the only way you can explain it mm -hmm. is you tell him that the feeling is lucky because not all kids have what I have. Okay, okay. You mean he is lucky? He yeah. is lucky to have yeah. a father. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because not all kids have what he mm -hmm. has, which mm -hmm. is yeah. a father. True. 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 So when you look at this dynamic, count your blessings. Mm -hmm. Because you're going to run into friends who don't have a father. Mm -hmm. And this is most likely how they have grown up. They are, it, it, it's, it's difficult mm -hmm. because of A, B, C, and D. So more than anything, again, it's a, it's a teachable moment. True, true, true. Of course, I took time to talk to him, discuss. You see, this simply means there's a single parent involved. Maybe... Uh, the father is not there for unforeseen circumstances. Oh, he, he might have died. We don't know what happened to the kid's uh, exactly, father. Exactly. I said maybe the father died when the kid was still young and yeah. all those details. Or, or ran whatever. away. Or ran away. Or divorced mm. and yeah. he doesn't show up. Yeah. yeah. You got married what, 2006? 2007. Seven. Why are you putting the man on the spot, man? His wife is going to watch this. You want him to get the, wrong, the dates wrong? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. You see, me and my wife, we've agreed a few things. There are things like uh, birthdays, such dates. <laughs> that you can forget. <laughs> she's, she's the accounts. Yeah, she's... Yeah, that's the right. Most of women are. She takes detail. Of, oh, you can't miss it. Most when, women, she's yes. She's particular about this. Even to know things about birthdays, birthday party gifts I've learned from yeah, her. same here. That's where we grew up. Same here. Birthday was old. Oh, today's my birthday. Ah, oh, whatever. Oh, you lean on your but wife her, as well on, on, on stuff like that? But her, on her birthday. <laughs> <laughs> but her, how she grew up, <laughs> birthdays guy. were on point. Then I came to learn, as I'm saying, it's where two people come together. You start learning how their mm. the other partner grew up. Then you said, oh, okay, so these dates are actually very important. Mm. So what, you, what, kind of, what kind of family does she come from? Comfortable? And yeah, I asked she's, that for a reason. I'm coming to something else. No, she's yet. fine. She's from a comfortable family. I asked that because you're, this is 2007, you're getting married at a time where you're now Zambia's biggest artist. Mm -hmm. And a lot of families don't really believe in somebody living off music at that mm -hmm. point mm -hmm. in our lives. 2007, mm -hmm. nah. Mm -hmm. Nope, nope. Even your father was a little skeptical about you. Mm -hmm. Now I'm imagining a man giving away his daughter to a Zambian artist. What was the family like taking you in as an artist marrying um, their daughter? It's always tough. Yeah. Now I think it's better. Now it's yeah. That's my point. It's, it's 2007. You know what I mean? 2007. Yeah. It was tricky, and I I know it was tricky. Actually, she had to play a role to just say ah, when see a Okay. She went through her own family struggles as well. Mm. I went through my own struggles as well, but um, it's something that eventually was accepted. And maybe fortunately, I knew her since 2000. Wow. So we were, we've been together over 20, 20 years. Yeah. Plus. 23 years now? Mm -hmm, somewhere there. So we've been together like that, just knowing each other. So when now the, the child came in and all that, we, we, we got married and all those details. 
But of course, uh, the way you've said, mm. but the way life works, you find that in the same family, two, three will be against, but two, three will be saying, no, 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 no. What's wrong with that? Yeah. It is what it is. So, I, but I, now, yeah. I want to believe there's harmony. There's acceptance. It's been acceptance. 17 years, man. Yeah, oh, yes. I mean, at some point, they would have to accept it. <laughs> <laughs> Especially yeah. when you prove yourself financially. Oh, yes. Take care of the kids. Yeah. Take care of the family. They're in school. Everything is happening. There's okay. Asunga Banja. The rest are details. I think in the arts, especially, I think it's an African thing. We all go through the same thing because when I was getting married, I was not even in business. I was just a DJ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's even worse. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> you know what I mean? You play records. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So now everybody's asking you, their, their, their daughter, their sister, their niece, you're getting married to a DJ. That, were, that, were you skinny, <laughs> bro? What were you like growing up? Were you skinny? What yeah, I was, a bit, I was a bit skinny. and uh, But even as a DJ, I was making a bit of money then, but it just doesn't give family confidence to know that their daughter's getting married to a DJ. How did you, you meet your wife? We met in a club. <laughs> What song, what song did she request? Very cliche. No, here's the funny thing. This is how we I met. I didn't ask this by accident, by the way. <laughs> we met in a club. And the funny thing is, she didn't want to be at the club that night. Mm. Up to now, my wife is one of those that you have to force to go out. So on that particular night, her friends actually carried her out of her room, pushed her into a taxi, and they came to the club. To the club. And there I am DJing. So they came and sat near to the DJ's box, DJ's booth, because she was in pajamas. So she couldn't ah. be, exactly, you see what I mean? So she couldn't be like, you know, mingling with everyone else in her pajamas at a club. <laughs> so I'm looking at this girl thinking, <sighs> why are you in your pajamas in a club? Is she like from the, is that like a boarding house right next door? Like maybe she's just buying dinner and whatever. So I kept staring at her. And she, next thing I say hi and we start was chatting. She hot though? Yeah. Or was it the pajamas that caught your eye? <laughs> Yeah, that too. And she was in pajamas and very colorful socks, house shoes. And we start, you know, we spark conversation. I get her number. Instead of working, bro. Yeah, I was there, busy mixing and, you know, do my thing. Yeah. And she was there. So, yeah, we start chatting, exchange numbers. And, well, the, the conversation started from there. Next, next day, we linked up. Conversations continued. Oh, you, don't, you, don't, you don't waste time. The very day, the very next day. Bah! Don't waste time. Here we are. Six years in marriage now. Oh, yeah. Nice. My condolences, yeah. man. <laughs> how, did, how did you meet your wife, bro? How, how yeah. did you meet your wife? How did you meet your wife? Um, I used to stay in Ibex, and she used to stay as well. In this, we're in the same area, actually. Oh, okay. I think I was just walking down the street. Very interesting. And she was coming the opposite. You know, the Ijiaku Dala, 16, 17, you take a walk. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. She's also walking. Then I'm like, okay. Gwang, gwang, gwang. This looks interesting. This is a good sight. This is a good sight. A good sight. <laughs> <laughs> then, actually, she was with the, the uncle or the cousin. So they were chatting, walking past. But after a few steps, I looked back. She also looked back. Ah, you ah, said, you're like, ah. ah. Done deal. It's a matter of time. From there, next is hi, 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 hi. Ah. We, we struck. And this was in 2000? Yeah, 2000. Did you have cell phones at this, this point? That's when they were just being introduced. So you didn't, you didn't quite have one at that point? No, no, no. no. That time I, I had my first, I think in 2001. It's just Siemens. Yeah. Oh, no, not Seote. What was that called? Zamsel. So in 2000, you had two landlines. <laughs> yeah, they were landlines. The landlines were still. You had, you had a line. And then the father answers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You cut the line until no, she picked up. No, but you see, up. the idea is when you meet, you are grilled on the calling time. Of course, all the, all, the yeah. all, the meeting, all the meeting time. We meet on the giveaway yeah. sign <laughs> under the tree <laughs> at 16. 16.30 because 17 hours, my dad will knock off. 19 yeah. hours, I'll be required to be in the so, house start cooking. So, tell so her, tomorrow I'll call around 10. Right. By 10, she'll just be playing around <laughs> the phone. Oh, gosh, we struggled, man. Hello? <laughs> we did. Our kids will never understand this. I was listening to a podcast coming here yeah. where they were saying, apparently now kids... They, they, they find it extremely difficult to talk to a girl because everything is happening online. Mm. Oh, they go on keep, TikTok, keyboard they go, warriors. Yes, they go on yeah. TikTok, they meet a girl, they chat a girl. So even when they set up a date, you don't know they what meet to it, say. They, they don't know what to say. You've already said everything. You still want to type. 
to this day, let me tell you this, bro. To this day, I remember the girl that I had a crush on when I was in primary school. I remember the feeling of walking up to the girl and asking her for, like, you know how, like, at the end of, like, when you're, when you're, when you're leaving high school, yeah. you, you get, like, the levers, the levers. Um, yeah, levers ball and, and Yeah, stuff, and I yeah. remember walking up to her and asking her and getting rejected, bro. Like, the feeling to this day, I still have it. Don't you. Bruh. Oh, she rejected. <laughs> she rejected me, bruh. For, for me. some light-skinned dude called Hillary. <laughs> Hillary Chitepo. <laughs> you motherfucker. My older brother's name is Hillary. <laughs> yeah, and there's also a smooth and, talker. Bruh. He's a very smooth talker. Do, do you I know what that does to you as a kid, though? I think I had the same fear of being rejected. So the first girlfriend I ever had, or well, she's married now, so let me not mention her name. But the first girlfriend I ever had, <laughs> my cousin did, made the moves for me. Arranged marriage. <laughs> no, not really. You know where I actually play with this girl, but I can't approach her. Like, mm -hmm. I can't tell her what I really feel about her or what moves I want to make with her. So I keep telling my cousin these things. And what was day, he older? Yeah, he was like a year older than me. But we used to hang out together like all the time. So he goes up to her. A year older is not really. Yeah, well, that's so what I'm saying. Like, if you're a carpenter, you'll be in the same packet. <laughs> Yeah, so my cousin made the moves on me. He went and told her, this guy likes you, wants to be your boyfriend, and blah, 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 blah. Tell him I said yes. And he comes back, dude, she's not your girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> she's not your girlfriend. That was it? That so was you it. woke up to her and you're like, I that's know you're it. my chick yeah, now? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's it. We dated for a while. But anyway, nice. Danny, mm -hmm. Elson brought up the issue of homosexuality. And I bring that up because uh, I think this was your third album, Yakumbo, yeah, yeah. which spoke mostly to homosexuality. And at mm -hmm. this point in our lives, 2003, we didn't quite have people attacking us for being homophobic. We could speak about it anytime. Mm -hmm. And then you released an album whose first song was preaching sort of against homosexuality. Was it? Sort of. It wasn't. Or you were looking down upon homosexuality in a way. It wasn't. Because there was a guy you were talking about who was getting it from behind. Like he's, uh, he's talking about a guy on this song who... All of a sudden, we're seeing him with, uh, I'm paraphrasing, he's living lavishly all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. But what we don't know is that behind the scenes is getting it from the back. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. But that's the premise of the song. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What are your thoughts on homosexuality at this point in your life, though? You mean now or then? Then and then. now. Then, you see, uh, how that idea was born, actually, it was something I was not very much seen in Zambia by then. Yeah. I think I saw it first time. I think I went to South Africa to where I, was, I had my brother. He was living there. So I would frequent right. going there to right. visit and all that. They are, they've been advanced. Mm. Then I could see that, oh, okay, this looks normal here. So when I came here, there were a lot of songs by then that were talking about the opposite sex. Hey, Sandra, hey, Gukabuata. Remember that song? Yeah, Sakala about, Brothers. Yeah, yeah. Brothers, yes. There was a, a Kalindula band, which is a song like, you know? Then I was asking myself, yeah. so does it mean only the ladies are doing something bad mm. than the men? Mm -hmm. So the first thing that struck me was what I saw in SA because I knew that in a matter of time it would be all over. So I talked about it. I said, okay, Yakumboyo. And if you listen to the song the way I, I wrote it, Nipo. So in the song, I just talked about it, brought out the issues. Oh, oh, so Keplasi, okay, okay. Oh, so, mm, so these guys were seeing. Keplasi, smashy, okay. Oh, okay, okay. And he gets hit from the back. I, yeah. yeah, that's how I just came with the idea because I knew that at one point it would be what it is. It's something, anything that's happening in the world, Africa, we are just behind. It's still catch up. It will catch up with you. Yeah. Yeah, you know. Do you believe people are born gay or people... They, or they learn gay, it. They choose, um, they learn. I'll tell you something. You have to understand me. I'll tell you something very, very spiritual again. Mm -hmm. I was coming from South Africa mm -hmm. in a bus. Mm. Then with this old lady, way back, before I even did my first album, I don't know what we were discussing. Then she started telling us that, you know what, young man, when God blesses you with a child, <clears throat> while the child is still in the womb of the mother, mm. Don't start saying nifuna mwamuna nifuna mkazi. I don't. I want a girl. I want a boy. Don't say no, those things. Yeah. yeah. Then she even said, you know, sometimes you find that some people are even convinced this is a girl. They even buy pink clothes, girly stuff. 
pink yeah. clothes then mwana ka uja mwana ka bada pesa mamuna the first feeling of the parents is actually rejection disappointment mm. disappointment that i was expecting this, this and then i now got I've gotten this so it, it's more of, of a spiritual thing to, mm. where according to the lady she was explaining which i found a bit interesting mm. so you find that that child pesa na mwana avova na gura vive they start to get, dress the child in the same mm. pink dress but in mundu shini is a guy it's a boy imagine k plus in pink in, in pink, pink. <laughs> I don't want to, I don't even want to imagine that. <laughs> they know that. So it's just something that I thought so that okay okay but you see these are the dynamics of life. These things will always be there. Mm. And they will be there. And they've been there. Sodom they've and Gomorrah is an example. It was a, yeah, this is 3000 years it, ago. It's like it's a Bible. cycle. Yeah. Yeah. 3000 years ago. Yeah. So. And the Bible is also very clear that in the future these things will come back. Yeah. And it is what it is now. Let me tell you, let me tell you um I'm going to tell you a crazy walk with me. I'm going to tell you like a like a crazy story that I heard. All right? This person might kill me for telling this story. So, so there's a guy that works for a bank, right? Uh So, this guy's father died um about a year ago. Now, the father died in dollar. The father was in his late 60s. You know the river is you're approaching Kafubu Mo, there's a river there as you're entering Dola. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's from in tower into town. Yeah, right there. It's, yeah. Where, it's where the father's body was found. Mm. <clears throat> But the car was missing. So the so the father went missing for about a week. Uh, they were searching for him and they found the body there, but they couldn't find his car. A week after that, they, they found a guy driving the dad's car. They arrested the guy. Um obviously being in possession of a of a stolen vehicle upon further interrogation the guy then confessed that the owner of the car is actually dead they said who killed him he said i did why and how so then the guy begins to explain that the guys were drinking at the mall mm-hmm. um and then and then the guy then says the old man then says no let's go for a drive they get in the car and they drive and they get to 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 that river and then they stop and then they get out and then the guy the old man then tries to have sex with this dude and this guy is shocked like what are you doing and the escafol breaks out and he hits him uh and the guy falls to the ground and then he dies this guy panics um high tells out of the runs gets in his car because it's the quickest way to leave that place and drives off and goes to his house and doesn't leave the house for a week and then a week after that when he gets out of the house for the first time police catch up with him for driving a stolen vehicle and that's pretty much the whole story so they say okay fine at the very least we're charging you for vehicle theft and possibly manslaughter fast forward a couple of weeks later which is now like 2 3 weeks ago uh when the issue is now like is now getting his verdict and it's now in court and the defense then says no actually the prosecution then says we've got a different theory this is very interesting they say we've got a different theory the theory that you, the story that you gave us that you guys drank and then you went and then you tried to have sex with you and then you refused and then you hit him and we think that's bs here's what we think happened you guys were in a relationship you went you both went to your house you were having sex the old man died mm. you drove him and you left his body there and then you came back but when you told your lawyers that they told you you're going to be charged with three things <laughs> manslaughter <laughs> sodomy stealing a car and sodomy so no homosexuality just yeah. by one or whatever it is yeah. so you're going to have to say this guy tried to force himself on you and then in self defense you hit him at the point where the body was found so you're going to be charged with two things <laughs> and so i was listening to this i was like this is like straight out of a this, crime book or yeah, something this, is, this yeah you know <laughs> this this actually happened and the guy was now charged with manslaughter and um theft of a motor vehicle homosexuality charge nothing nothing and i think for manslaughter <laughs> he was given five years yeah because homosexuality is because with the most actually you're going to get like what the guys who were caught in kapiri were given what 15 years 15 yeah, yeah. 
you know what I mean? Infamous and and, and that's just a more difficult charge to prove unless caught mm-hmm. in the act. Exactly. Yeah. But now in circumstances like this, you're going to have to say, I did not plan to kill the man. Yeah. Because if there's premeditation now, that's murder. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And how they then said, okay, we don't blame you because I think when these guys did the investigations, they saw that this guy had actually hit on other dudes. This old man, <laughs> which actually got me thinking like, dude, you are like almost at the end of your life. You are you're in your late 60s. What the hell are you doing? <laughs> experimenting? And you've got kids <laughs> who are grown, who are like in their 40s. Wow. Do we still honestly really think that people pretend or they get peer pressured into being gay? Like you're 70. You know? What peers are pressuring, gonna pressure you, you into doing this? <laughs> He's just been in a closet all his life then. Yeah. Probably. Exactly. Yeah. What are you, that, that was that was that, those were your thoughts then, Danny. Nice nice story, by the way, Elson. Those were your thoughts then after your South Africa trip. Nice story, like I came up with it. <laughs> no, like interesting scenario. You, <laughs> he, he says nice story, like I just came up with it. <laughs> I'm saying those were your 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 uh, thoughts on homosexuality then. That was your experience with it. Going to South Africa, then uh, you did a song and an album. Twenty years later, because the Yakumbu was like, 2003, four, Two thousand, yeah, three, four. That's the. Three yeah. into four. Yeah, that, that's Late three into four. 20 years ago, give or take. Mm. Those were your thoughts then. This thing was just coming into Zambia then. Like, mm. But now, what, what are your thoughts on homosexuality now, 20 years later? It's still the same. It's there. If you listen to the song, yeah. I just sparked people's brain to say, this is real and it's happening. Mm. If you listen to the song very carefully... I never supported it and I never condemned it. I just spoke you were, about it. <laughs> you, you were very careful. I can give you all the lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be like, oh, okay. So this is what's happening now. So we are here. And then what? It's a very deep topic and very sensitive. I wouldn't want to meddle myself t- too, too much, much into, into it. it. Mm. Yeah. But anyway, the album but it is there. The album was entitled Yakumbuyo. Elson was not in the country then. I know it means at the back. It means at the back, yeah, Yakumbuyo. Mm, Elson was not in the country then, but I'm not talking about the translation. I'm talking about what the album was like. Ha! I need to I just... Can, I can see it in your face. <laughs> that album... Dude, that, if we played... Do we get flagged by YouTube? If we play the song. Yeah. No, for as long as we don't monetize, we can play the song. Mm-hmm. But anyway, it's not about the song. The album... This album has had like what seven songs? Yeah, like seven, yeah, yeah. Very seven very songs and two instrumentals two at the instrumentals, end. Yeah. Dude, have you ever seen a top ten chart that has all the songs from one album? <laughs> yeah. Like Back then, two thousand three, the top ten we the two top ten charts Zambia used to listen to was Radio Four and Radio Phoenix. Radio Phoenix. The mm. top ten countdown. Mm-hmm. Phoenix is that old? Dude, Phoenix no. is nine, the first commercial radio yeah. station in Zambia, nineteen ninety six. Yeah, mm-hmm. was the first one. Dude, you start listening to the local rhythms countdown. I was the 19 hours on a Saturday, huh? Did the 19 hours on a Saturday? 20 hours somewhere there? Sun, is it Sunday? No, no it was, no, was, was on Saturday. Saturday. Yeah, Saturday yeah. Dude, it starts at 19 hours. I can't remember who's the number 10, 9, 8. Then they come to number 7. It's Danny. Six, Song from the album. Yeah. 6, Three, Danny. Mm. 5, 4, 3, 2, <laughs> 1. All the songs on the album. But how does it feel though, bro? All the songs on the album were on the charts. On every radio know. station I, in Zambia. I, I can't, how, how I, I can't explain it. Mm. Legendary. It was the start of music that made it so big. Yeah. Of course, personally, it felt good. There are a lot of songs being released, but you have you are lucky that five. The or six, whole album was on the, the charts. The whole album would be like one to six. You know what it felt seven. like? It felt like we were just listening to his CD all over again on radio. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I learned to trick. You see, by then there were CDs and cassettes. Yeah. Mm. So I learned how to arrange songs in a way that when someone buys a CD, you slot it in. You won't skip a song. It's also a trick I came to learn. Mm. So people ended up falling in love with all the songs by how they've all been arranged. The it's like when a DJ is playing, they'll make a playlist yeah. that won't make you skip a song. That will keep on the dance floor the whole night. Yeah? Yes. So you can do that to your songs. Mm. You just know we play with the keys, the tempo, you know, fast song, slow song, a cautious song here, maybe another fast song, just like that. What do you what do you think of the artists that are there now? Sorry? The artists that are there now, mm. what do you think about them and the music they're making? 
I think it's um, <clears throat> they are very creative as well. Yeah. They're as actually, creative as you guys were. Yeah, in a very different uh, way. Mm. Cuz uh, they had style music for example hip hop the genre is very different. Mm-hmm. But when I listen to the lyrical content, bantu waganiza. Yeah, true. How they play with words. Mind you all this m- music we do especially in Zambia it's inspired Mm. by maybe from America from Jamaica mm. how you manage to zambianize it even get the skill there but make it very local is what mm. is amazing you find you be rhyming and doing what what can i use i want to give an example of metaphors in music yeah. that's great mm. to me it's a very different genre that's making a lot of noise now but There's a lot of talent out there. It's just we just need to keep knowing how to enhance it. But with the way it just gone digital, I think it's getting easier. At some point the internet was messing us up. Technology rather was messing us up. But now it has been caught up and I think we are we're getting there. I just I just want to play the the intro to the to the song which every time you uh No no that's uh <laughs> that's another song that to date <laughs> yeah yeah and you know the trick i usually play yeah. with a song kaya mm-hmm. you could play the most bumping techno songs as a dj you, you're blazing those like even on the new year i like i like events like new year's mm-hmm. nights especially that's when i like playing that song because yeah. it's very it's got that message that makes oh. you think about your life mm-hmm. and i like how play bumping bumping songs midnight 1 a.m. and then you just make the club go quiet and then you bring in the guitar strings ding 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 let me just play it my voice is so that that you did this yourself no 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 there's a man called Mr. David Akoma he's oh, one who played he's a left-hand guitarist very talented man he's one who played those left-handed people are very guitar. like he's left-handed as well oh, okay yeah beautiful that's everything in your life my wife was asking me this and I thought I would, I would, I would ask you careful i'm also left-handed so You see that's what that's as, my as, point. As Left-handed yeah, people are just <laughs> super either they'll be very intelligent or very creative. Yeah, yeah. Left-handed people because I think they use so the side of the brain two, that Which of the two do you think I am? You're intelligent. That's a given. Wait, you want your you, your wife was uh, Oh, was my wife was asking me. because we're, were you guys in bed? Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> You're a dick. <laughs> so <laughs> we're having dinner the other day. So You know we're using cutlery. Mm-hmm. I see where this is going, yeah. Yeah, so she's saying do left handed people do it the other way like <laughs> <laughs> No, but I'll tell you what's funny. Do you use the knife in the left hand? <laughs> no, no, no. So I use obviously I use the the, the correct way with the yeah. focus on the left hand, but I'll tell you something Because your your left hand is stronger, so you're going to yes, cut with. Yes, yes, yes. But yeah. but I'll tell you what's weird though is um okay, so when you when you when you're eating and you've got just your fork, you use your left hand. What do you use? I eat, I always eat with my right. Right. Hand, yeah. I use my left hand to eat. Right, so yeah. when I'm not using cutlery, and I'm just using a fork, I use my left hand. Mm-hmm. But I remember I went to, I went to, I went to Prime Joint, and then I ordered ribs. Yeah. So, so obviously my dominant hand is the left one. You're gonna my, cut with that, right? So I'm so obviously when you're eating ribs, you eat with your hands, right? Yeah. So I'm using yeah. my left hand to eat the ribs. So my my left hand is all messed up with soup and whatnot, and I try to use my my right hand to pick up the fork <laughs> to then eat the mash. Jesus, man. <laughs> Is it the same with Tell you? Tell me why that meal yeah. took two hours. <laughs> but again, it's so uh, funny picking up food with my right hand. But again, it's a bit different for for someone like me. Yeah, you know, I'm from the very very old. I'm the last one. Right. Dad is 81. So who's 81? My dad. Dad. He's 81. Lucky you, man. He's 81. My dad died wait, at 67. Wait, what do you mean he's 81? Yes. Oh, he's 81 years old. Yes. Oh, Jesus Christ, I'm so slow. <laughs> Because in my mind, I'm thinking he was born in 81. <laughs> no, he's 81 years old. Um, so people from old were very strict about everything. So I remember when they noticed at a tender age that I was trying to do my shimmer with my left. Mm. He just said... They treated me almost like a curse. Right? So I had to start eating with him on the high table. And Meaning now you are forced to eat with your right. To be so like now, everyone else. Yes. Yeah. So now I had to give respect to food. <laughs> now I'm I'm like this. When I'm eating shima, I'm a perfect right guy. I can't even use my left. I can't use my right though. I'll use my right nicely. When I'm eating something like something like a pen or because at school he won't be there, I'll right. be right with my left. Right. When I'm playing basketball, 
I'll bounce with my right and shoot with my left. My dominant mm. hand is my left hand. Weird like that. But I've so, loved it. It has worked for me. Even masturbation happened with your Ooh. left hand. Why are you talking about my dick now? <laughs> you just had I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about your hand. Like would it happen with the left hand? But what do you what, what, what do you jerk off? What do you masturbate? <laughs> your dick, right? Yeah, but with your left hand, all right. Yeah, yeah. Was yeah. this part of what your wife was also asking you when you guys were in bed about me? <laughs> no. I'm asking I, you, bro. I'm just Yes, I use my left hand, nigga. <laughs> this is why I got blisters in my left hand. <laughs> you know, I was just looking at this and like which hand has got blisters? <laughs> oh gosh, Danny, about that album, man. We, we, we've but who, so who doesn't who doesn't jerk off though? <laughs> Who who in this room doesn't? <sighs> both you I'm, niggas are married. Actually. I'm married. Wait, hold up. Both you niggas are married. Do you still, do you guys still jerk off? No, no, no. We're sorted. Bullshit. Why no, would we? we're sorted. Why would we? You say what? Why, why would we? Why would we? No, because there is there is a difference between when you jerk off and when you have sex. It feels different. Then you, you're not gonna sit here then, and bullshit me. Nah. Then, then, but, uh, then you've jerked off too much. Too much. <laughs> no, it's got nothing to do with that. No. You start finding treasure what in it. am I lying? Wait, Lamek. Because Lamek is laughing too hard. <laughs> you, you've had sex He's a single guy. He's a single guy. <laughs> hey. No, but is it true or, or am I lying though? See, see, he says he it's said true. He says it's true. <laughs> that he jerks off. No, that it feels different. It's different. When you have sex and when you jerk off, the feeling course, is different. that's something you know from when you're a teenager. A teenager, yeah. But when you get married, you sort of just get over these things and now you just focus on... Now when you on... start treasuring the difference, there's a problem. Yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't say anything about Cause, treasuring. Cause, I just said it's different. Because initially... I didn't say which one is better. I just said it's different. <laughs> But I don't believe you guys that you stop nah, jumping off you when stop. you're no, Trust me, believe. you just sort of get over it and you move mm. on and you just focus. Just sex, that's it. So the only form of sex that you're having is with your wife? Yeah, that's it. Bullshit. <laughs> I call bullshit. <laughs> I call bullshit. <sighs> Press 17 Moving. years and use six? <laughs> ah, bullshit. Danny, so there was... Uh... If we have the same conversations when the mics are off, I'm going to ask you the exact same question. You should ask me when I'm going home. You're, 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 home you're home driving you? me home, right? You say what? You're, you're driving me home, right? Did your wife cook? <laughs> I'll, I'll, we'll find out. We're done. Danny, so first album was uh, Maskuonse. Mvelani. Oh, Mvelani. Mvelani. Then Maskuonse. Then Yakumbuyo. No, no, no. Mvelani, that's where Maskuonse is. Oh, crap. Yes. Yeah, the title of the album was Mvelani. So you got your name from a song, not the album. Yes. Because the was, trend after that was albums. Albums, yeah. Because yeah. I did the song as a single. Right. So people heard... Masiku Wonse as a single, then the follow up was the album in which the song was. Mm. Yeah. Then my next one was Amala Ving. Yes. Now we had now the Chikon Chago Judy. Yeah. The, we had now the. With George Chibangu as yeah, well. Yeah, George Chibangu. Uh, Shua Baby. Tagu, Shua, oh, I yeah. love that song, yeah. man. Oh, that, God rest his soul. Joe. That was Amala Ving. Shua Baby. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that on Spotify? Uh, no, what I've done actually is that um, I, need, I haven't listened to I've, that song in years, man. I've done, I've put them in categories. So by yeah. actually in the next two weeks, even the other two albums, I, I've I've put them on all these platforms, but they are yeah. being called Danny, uh, the best of Danny Kai music. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing right now. Yeah. yeah, that one is volume one. You find that there are those songs. Then there's volume two. I, I'm picking <clears> songs from all albums and putting yeah. them. So people can easily... But why don't you have the albums there, though? Because, I mean, most of your albums mm. sounded like the best of all the time. <laughs> yeah, your albums yeah, were that good. Yeah, so course, why don't you just have the albums there? I thought of it like that, first of all. Maybe. And I think but there's going to be more... Say, I think there's right. going to be more revenue opportunity for you when you put your albums there. Albums and the Because for the old school, those of us who enjoyed your albums would mm. rather listen to the whole body of work the way it was. Mm -hmm. I want to listen to Yakumbuyo, then Taufipanga, mm. then... Then I want to go the to yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. I think I think you should, man. Food for thought, nice. You should. There's a waiter that I that I bumped into at um, a Mozambique, and his name is Kumbuyo. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to Yaku? I know, right? <laughs> what, happened, what happened to the Yaku Kumbuyo? Yaku part of it. Is, I'm sure you've seen the same guy. Kumbuyo. Yeah. Is that guy the the buff yeah. guy? Oh, that's his name. Yeah. Oh shit! You know, I always meet him and I never know his name, eh? Now you know. I'll never look at him the same. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so Danny, we're talking about your albums. Um, so then there's Yakumbuyo. What came after that? Yakumbuyo, then came Kaya. 
Kaya. Kaya came champion. Champion at the one uh, is the one that had the will miss you. Will miss no, you. Will miss you came in the live album where there was now winners are live little. That's when we had the that one. You see what I'm saying like almost every album you put out had something that society would just relate to. That was the idea. Was just the like the Tukuzi. That was the concept. Like an Oliver um, Tukuzi album. Yeah, that's how you would do it. Mm. Which is why I remember the last time we met was in Moflira. That was in that, uh, that was in November, October, November. Festival, yeah? The festival, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Dude, he goes on stage, and you were the last per- you were the last artist to go no, on no, stage, no. right? I was just before. <clears throat> no, after after Super. Uh, oh, the Muslim so guy. What's his name again? Aqua. Ah, yeah, yeah. Funny Aqua skin name. <laughs> what's his name? I call our skin. Jesus Christ, we need to speak about that dude. One of those <laughs> days, man. <laughs> I, I don't know why I'm scared for him when you mentioned that, but I know ah, it, I'm sh- just sharing the story, shit, man. And hold that thought. Uh, no, you performed after him. I think it was just after him, somewhere there. I remember I announced him. He did like three, four songs. He ah, left the stage. Yeah, it was after him. And then this is an audience, Elson, with kids. It was a kids' festival. Mm. Tell me why a guy with current songs goes on stage and the response is not that much. And then somebody with songs that are 20 years old in the market comes on stage and kids run to the stage. So who are these people? Who went on stage and there was no response? He went on stage. And there was a response. Dude, so, so who kids didn't get come a response? To the, you know, I was watching from the... Because uh, when you were performing... I think I have good photos. You should put them on the screen, Lamek. Are you, are Lamek? You, are, you, are you hearing my questions? Who did what? Who did not get a good response? No, no. I, I'm saying Akwalaskin got good response as well. But it's one of those where he performs, the crowd was at the stage. But then the moment I, I was the person doing the hosting of the event. So the moment I announced Danny, like everyone who was hiding in little chalets and whatever, comes kids, everyone just comes running towards the stage. Because he doesn't the, twerk. Because he doesn't twerk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 alone. <laughs> so you come on the stage and I took, I'll show you the photos I took from the side okay. of the stage and you went and stood in the speaker okay. and you do a cappella. First was an instrumental thing. The guys come mm. on the stage, they dance and then you start singing a cappella. And I'm looking at the kids thinking, how do they even know these songs? How does it make you feel to still be able to entertain such a crowd 20 years in the game? And how do you even that's keep what, that going? That's the grace that I've, I, I'm always thankful. I've also failed to understand sometimes. You know, you find there are times at home, my son is coming from school, the taxi driver who would bring him home. Yeah. Who'll be playing an instrumental. Mm. So he'll be listening to it, he gets home. Then the following day, he goes to pick him up, then he's saying, Uncle, can you play that instrumental you played yesterday? So the taxi driver says, which one? It's an instrumental you played, it's like, so, oh, you mean your, your dad's song? Then the kid will be like, hey, is that daddy's song? <laughs> then I'm like, okay, that's interesting. This is a kid who wasn't there, but the music has managed to relate. Mm. I just get grateful and thankful. It's like kids of now, they still listen to Michael Jackson in a way. Yeah, true. It's just something that his music has that even the next generation probably will come it and transcends. Relate. Ages and, and it's, decades. If and you have that, thank God. And I'm blessed with that. Now, that, that for me, you know, I, I, the hairs on the back of my spine, man, like I felt, you know, that feeling like, <laughs> I think it's trying to imagine the feeling I had. Like, you know, it just feels so good, like warm inside, like 20 years in the game and this guy is still able to pull this off. It was interesting, man. I just saw something on, on the screen that uh, <laughs> you you got Netflix at home. Yeah, yeah, but I'm not a fan of too much movies. I'm... Well, we've all got Netflix. You've seen that, the new announcement about... Uh, the password The password, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I, I hate the way. Actually, you see how much yeah. I'm behind? I had my daughter in... But ma- only if you're outside the Madame. same house. It's only if you're outside what? The same house. So password sharing... Hey, dude, is, I know, I know homes... If you're in the same home. From now on, whenever it's going to be implemented, if you're in the same home, you can share passwords. Yeah, because I know homes where <laughs> all your relatives around the world use your password. Me, <laughs> me. I was avoiding saying me, but <laughs> my sister in Australia uses my password. You see what I mean? I, I log in and I'm like, I haven't watched this movie. Hey. <laughs> and halfway. it's actually halfway. halfway. <laughs> and it's halfway. 
But have you have, have you also noticed how there was this bias? I don't know if you've also noticed how Netflix algorithm, um, depending on what you watch, is able to determine your race and your gender. Hmm. Yeah, I'm and sure. um, yeah, your, your race and your gender. Why I tell you this is, there was a time that I watched Breadbox. What was on the um, what do you, is what, what's the what, what's the what's the equivalent of a, of a movie cover from a, like yeah like the movie cover? What was there was different to what was on my sister's account. Mm. On my sister's account was Sandra Bullock holding her two kids. On mine was her walking in the forest looking scared. <laughs> mm. Okay, and I was like, they must have determined this is a woman. And so we appealed to her to watch it by involving kids in it. And then there was another one for love, actually, (laughs) where they must have determined that the person whose account that they were doing this to was black because when you watch Love Actually, there are only three black people in it and they're in the movie for all of two minutes. Those are the people that they put on the cover oh, of the oh. person. And when they clicked it and they watched it, the black people were in it for two minutes and the rest is fucking white people. <laughs> Sounds racist a little bit, eh? Just a little bit. I'm looking for those photos from Fleur because I was so, you know, I'll, I'll send them to you when I find them. Please. You, know, you said you don't watch a lot of TV. What do you do um, in your home? Um, I don't watch um, like a lot of movies. I'm a, I'm a documentary news. I'm a documentary news guy, and mm-hmm. just just a lot of of such. You find that I watch a lot of ID ID extra. Like yeah, I watch a lot of documentaries as that's, well. Crime, that's especially. Just, that's just me. I get fascinated how these guys are able to to find one one come see see your hair and I <laughs> catch you. To, that, yeah, that, just yeah, yeah. that fascinates me. How they're able to. Trace you back to that, and I think that's what I I just watched. Which normally. is where our Zambian women would get away with it because mm. when they when they get the hair, they're gonna trace it to some lady in India or Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> like you, you flew to Zambia and you hey. committed a crime. <laughs> what is this? They'll be locked up, <laughs> arrested for something. You're not even. <laughs> what photos are you looking for, dude? The, fo- the the photos I took of him on stage in Muflir, and I think I'm close now. When was I'm seeing some of the great in my phone, so it should be close. When was this? When was this? October. Was yeah? that October somewhere? There? So, oh, so you're still performing, or that was like a, just a once-off? And no, no, actually, from I have a very, very hectic schedule. From August to December, mm-hmm. maybe I'm only free two, three weekends. You're getting booked? Yeah. All the wow. time, bro. And sold out gigs. Every weekend from August to December is like that. Hey, so can I hit on so girls? this is the only time that I'm... Hey, bro, wait, <laughs> listen, listen, listen to my story. So can I hit on girls and then tell them that I know you? And then I, I I lock your number into my phone. And when I call you, because you're going to have to say my phone number. You're like, oh, hey, dude, what's up? Long time. I ain't seen you in a while. No problem. How much? <laughs> Talk to me nicely. <laughs> okay, we got something. <laughs> there are a lot of stray bullets, you know, where we are. <laughs> I may hit you. <laughs> but don't you still get like, like a lot of girls throw themselves at you? It's the nature of the business. Yeah. What can you do? At the end of the they day, will always come, and it's up to how you handle it. Yeah, true. It's always there. Okay, whether you like it or not. Yeah, that's true. I won't ask for the questions. <laughs> About, is that Kim Jong Un? Yeah, and his ten-year-old daughter, who who the world is feeling is grooming to be the next leader of North Korea. Is he bald now? He's looking funny. I think he, he game... looks like he's forty years old. Oh, I'm poor, I'm poor, or something. Yeah, I think it's, it's the weight. Him, huh? It's the weight. Were you paying attention? I know I digress a lot because I just thought about this when I watched Kim Jong-un, about that balloon that was uh, floating around oh, yeah, in America. Yeah, America and they took it down. China has got some balls, bro. After what they did with fucking Corona, they should be quiet as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, man, it gets on my nerves. But then again, Americans are paranoid people. My point being, that could have been just a weather balloon. They, they a quite, weather balloon. They haven't quite found anything yet that proves that it was a spy balloon. Uh, dude, they have got... Americans, are just, Americans always feel like they're under attack. Always. They, they the have paranoia been, they is have real. Been attacked. They have been attacked. Yeah, but 
Yeah, if we've got reason to be, to be paranoid. Yeah, but even before the attacks, they're, they're just paranoid. You can because talk, they you attack can, other countries. Exactly That's my where point. Their paranoia exactly comes my from. point. So even when a balloon just strays from another country, they'll, 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 their paranoia will tell them it's an attack. If you're a guy who keeps smashing other people's girls, <laughs> the day you see a girl, the, the day you see a guy at your house just hanging around, you'll be like, mm, nigga, what's going on? Mm. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> you're seeing your tactics. <laughs> Yeah, you're seeing your tactics. Because <laughs> you're seeing your own tactics. <laughs> Imagine me asking you, like, Kalenga, so what times do you normally not be home? <laughs> what times does time school run? <laughs> no, but still, I, I always feel... Anyway, like, like you've said, the paranoia is coming from somewhere. But one thing I really hate is when America says we had an unprovoked attack. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's possible for America in any way. When did they say that? Uh, let's take it back to 2001, 9-11. They called that an unprovoked attack. Osama bin Laden, Twin Towers, they called that an unprovoked attack. And, and, and how, where was the provocation? The provocation? Have you re- There was no Dude, provocation. No, there was a lot of provocation. Tell me. A lot of provocation. To Obama? Sorry, sorry to, to Osama? Not just Osama, but his people. He, dude, the podcast I'm listening to nowadays, former CIA agents and the stuff they're revealing nowadays on podcasts, listen to a podcast called CIA Files. Listen to another one called, uh, I can't remember the title, but I'll give, nigger. I'll give you the link. Say the provocation. So this CIA agent, the chick who first disco- who found out there's even a guy called Obama, uh, Osama in the 80s, she says, I can't quite call 9-11 an unprovoked attack because in 1988, when Israel was attacking Palestine and them, America supplied Israel with all the machinery to attack Palestine, and they backed that. People in the Middle East were not too happy with that, okay? When America was attacking people in Iraq, uh, you know, supplying ammunition for uh, coups to take place, Osama bin Laden was busy writing letters to the American government for years. So, Kalenga, right now America is giving Ukraine weapons. Can we say they are provoking Russia? No, 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 no. Uh, I'll come to the Ukraine one as well, what the CIA agents are saying about that. So for years, he wrote them letters about warning them to stop their activities in the Middle East. Them arming rebels, them arming gov- uh, thing, uh, rebels take over governments when they shouldn't have been, just so they could take, over, take the oil while the wars were going on behind their backs. All those things he wrote about. So when 9-11 came, he had been warning them for years, but they were ignoring him. Why? Because as far as they were concerned, he was just some rich kid in the mm. Middle East who they didn't think was a threat until 9-11 happened. And they called it an unprovoked attack. True. However, yeah. put yourself in Bush's shoes, yep. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's, been an, atta- and there's yeah. been an attack. Do you expect him to sit back and say, yeah, well, we because we did, yeah. This, yeah, we did this in the 80s and now they have retaliated. <laughs> let's, no, let's, no, no, my let's, point let's, is... Let's, let's call it even. Of course he's not. Yeah, what kind of leader is he going to be? No, 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 you're missing my point. My point is, like you've agreed, they would call it an unprovoked attack. So when it can clearly retaliate. wasn't. But of course, they're going to hide the fact that they were actually warned mm-hmm. by saying, look, mm-hmm. he's going to look that way like you've described if he tells the truth. Do you pay attention to this? Yeah, yeah. I to do. social politics? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, enough yeah, about man. politics, man. We have Danny no, here. I actually, I actually yeah. enjoy that quite a lot because I've always said, unless you study your history, there is nothing new that happens today that hasn't happened before. Yeah, with, this, with this Russia and Ukraine thing, happening oh, really? there's one person who's watching this very closely to see if russia gets away with it and that's xi jinping mm. because that nigga has got his eye on taiwan okay but then again when it comes to the ukraine war put yourself in putin's position no 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 no. if you're an not, enemy I... comes to set up an army base mm. by your neighbors, your neighbors are you just gonna sit back and watch wait wait hold on and call it wait what? hold on uh-huh. wait, who, who set up what base way are you, are you following this ukraine thing very yes closely? i am yeah so, so you haven't heard about way? America and Ukraine ties and whatever, and why, why Putin is feel threatened? Oh, feeling firstly, threatened? Yeah. firstly, number one, there are so many at every other country that is in NATO, yes, including Has Poland, an army base, right. including Poland, yes, yes, which Ukraine wants to join NATO. So what a sovereign country does has got nothing to do with Russia. But if you don't, uh, Danny, sorry, I will you know you an we'll, example. Have this, we'll, we'll have discussion later. I will give also. you an example right now. Hang yeah. on. Do you know that there's U.S. Marines in Zambia? Of course. With, with, why, would any other, big... why would any other neighboring country be threatened by that? Yeah, but which, I, I what... think it depends on the relationship. For example, exactly. if, uh, that's, that's what I was about to say. For yeah. example, if uh, uh, the, the, the same, who are, uh, the, the, the Marines are here, mm-hmm. and there's a big beef between the neighbors, South Africa yeah. and the, 
the US. Mm. Trust me, South Africa will feel uncomfortable. Very uncomfortable. Very good, very it, good it, point. It's exactly what happened before this. I hear uh, Russia was trying to set up something. Is it in Cuba? Mm-hmm. And, I remember that. And America won them strongly and went because that was wide. too close. They had to proximity. Proximity. Right. So, yes. proximity. Okay, so now let me ask you a question. Mm. Who is Putin? To a them, big enemy of America. Of America. Yes, mm. but uh, my a threat. point is my point a threat, is not enemy. Sorry, a threat. Yeah. Who is he to dictate to Zelensky, Zelensky, what to do with his own servant country? If he is to let America or anybody else, for that matter, set up in his country, that's a sovereign state. It's not, this is no uh, longer the USSR. This discussion will take longer than mm, it should okay. because. But do you get what I'm this trying to say? This goes back. What to... then gives you the balls? Because the the truth of the matter here, apart from what you've just said, yeah. is this guy trying to stroke his ego to set up the USSR again? I was about to head Which back to Ukraine USSR. Was because... part of. That was dismantled what in the eighties, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's what the whole issue is. Is before he he's, he wants his legacy, just like Xi Jinping believes Taiwan is part of China. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. When we start this discussion, we we'll keep going that, on and on. Yeah. One last point: <laughs> with all this shit happening, Lesotho has got the balls. <laughs> did you read this? <laughs> to say parts of South Africa belong to them. <laughs> There's a fucking case here in this you're under already, ass. You're already in another country. Your you're, whole country is in another in country. <laughs> Bruh. Ah, well. Your whole country is in another country. You're a subset. <laughs> so there are people that are watching this Russia and Ukraine war to say if Putin gets away with this. We ah, are. Even me also, I want. Even me. Hmm. Danny. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm so happy having you in this podcast, man. Thanks, like, man. I, I haven't had... Not that all the other episodes haven't been this late, but... I just feel special being in your presence, man. And Thank you, bro. You being in the industry 20 years, are you giving us anything? Like, you, at, at 10 years, you gave us an album. Mm-hmm. 20 years, anything mm-hmm. special happening? And your birthday is coming up. There's a gig, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, it's, it's coming up this this Saturday, 18th February. Sweet. It's going to be so from about two years now, I always do something. Last year, we were at um, Raiders as kids. Yeah. This year, we were at uh, Try Lounge. So what I do is I come up. Vusi. Yeah, 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 shout out to Vusi. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, That's my guy. So we'll be there this coming Saturday. So I'll always invite one, two, three guys. There will be JK, there will be Afunika. There will be Elson support. and K+. Plus. We do it, of course, why not? No, I'll definitely be there. There's a lot of footage there. Put up a big cake and just sing and please feel free to bring presents. I know by the time this airs, your birthday would have passed and the gig would have been done already, but... That won't be nice. When is this airing? It's supposed to air... Tuesday. It was supposed to air on Friday, right? So it will air Tuesday, right? Yeah. Next week, Tuesday? Yeah. No. Oh, this week, Tuesday. But this is after Wait. Sean Tempo. It is after Sean Tempo. Yeah. Yeah, it's this Oh, week but it's still Tuesday. after his birthday, though. Yeah, it will be after his birthday. We yeah, get that. Yeah, that's my point. But he's saying which Tuesday? Is it this Tuesday? So we're saying... No, no yours is... One Tuesday away. The other Tuesday. Okay. I yeah. See. Probably. So you do this. You started yeah, two years uh, ago. Yeah. I I do now two events, which are my my own events. Right. There's this one, then I also do the Danica Music Fest. I don't know if you you've attended any of that. No. If you've not attended that, you are missing big. That's when, when is the next one? It's always first week of September. Right. I'll be there this year. We do it so huge, so big. I'll share the link then. You, you know, I'm new it. in Lusaka, right? So oh, I haven't, yeah, I haven't yeah, been knowing yeah, much yeah. of what's happening in Lusaka. You so. will love it. And this year, it's the fifth anniversary. We've been doing it for, for five years now. Well, where does that happen? Is it the one that happens at... It, uh, I saw one at Barclays. That was some years ago. Though. I don't know. I don't know. First one we had was at uh, Levy Mall. Yeah. Car Park. Then we took it to the hotel. Uh, Mika Convention. Yeah. Last year was in Showgrounds. Yeah, but that's you see that, that's the thing about you. We Danny. have really like, like three, four thousand people come in one place. That's huge, man. It's huge, and it's that's that's the thing that you know surprises me about you because just a month ago I attended Tai Two and uh, mm-hmm. Hamoba's gig at uh, 80s Lounge mm-hmm. wasn't that big. People just love you, man. Like, what what what, what do you do to people? <laughs> <laughs> what is it about you? What do you think it is about you that? People just love, apart from the music. I think it's the consistency first. As yeah. I say, the grace and the consistency. I started playing live music from the time of the Mayenge. I told myself, I'm a live performer. We're talking about this today. Okay. Yeah? Mm-hmm. I told myself, I'm a live performer. From that time, I've never looked back. I've had my band. The longest serving in a band is 17 years. The drummer. Others are 14 years. Mm. I've been with those guys for that long. 
So every event I do is live music. So people relate to live music more because you can play around with it. You can yeah. you, you can change anything. So I think over time people find it interesting to come and watch because they don't know what we'll do next but to be the same material but perform differently. And I, th- I think you sort of set the pace and very few artists have followed uh say I think Afunika is the only artist I know who also does live. No, right now. now the person who has a band is doing very well is Peterson. Is that is oh, yeah, like yeah, 10 yeah, years yeah, yeah. now. That is it's solid. I like their the act is good as well. Now but yours is just something else man. And who who, who do you have under your umbrella now? Is is Brian still there? No no no. I um, me when I I as a band I've only yeah. got Nasso and Titus. There's a the guys that who back me who I work with. Mm. Mm-hmm. I found it very difficult to have my own artists who I can manage cuz time Right. You have to manage yourself, you have to manage this one. I realize that mm. I wouldn't, but there are a lot of artists who have helped in the background. And I just I I fail to Where see you guide them, you push them, yeah. give them direction till they see it, and then you say, "Oh, no you can go now." Guide. I always feel it's just a non-working formula to be an artist managing artists. Mm, the focus stuff. will always be on you first mm-hmm. because you're also trying to shine and then you've mm-hmm. got people under you're trying to shine as well. How are you going to make those shine when you're, you're, you, feel, you're, you feel your light's not shining bright enough and already? Not everybody. Have you heard of Dr. Dre before? But you can yeah, do but, that. That's workable. You can. As long as, long as you can see good talent and you have it. the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Dr. Dr. Dre really push that. is the exception. There are very few who, artists who will make others below them or coming up shine as well. Lil Wayne? They yeah, there are very few. Like, look, let's talk about Africa. Yeah, my poor Lisa. There are very few. You have to really. No, no. no there are very I, few. I can there tell are very you, few. I can tell you at least as long as my um. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, nah, man, Daddy, it's been it's been so great having Thanks, you in the man. podcast and. You're a pretty, you're a pretty cool guy. I can tell you Extremely. that now. Extremely, yeah. You Thanks. are. It's my first time meeting you, but uh, yeah, I like your energy. Thank you. Just Thank based you. off, so I, I'm lucky, or unlucky, depending on how you look at it. That I don't have the bias. You know, like when you meet a superstar, you really can't ask them what you want to ask them because their presence is so heavy. Mm-hmm. Do you yeah, get like, what I'm like, trying like to like say? I'm so mm-hmm. starstruck. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you become mm-hmm. so starstruck. Yeah. So I sort of have that 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 unique advantage that I can just speak to you yeah, or yeah, relate freely. to you as yeah. a person. It, it would be it would be different if it was somebody that I sort of you know like like in mm-hmm. Kalinga's uh, scenario where I sit here with a mouthful of teeth like yeah. oh shit yeah I can't talk to Danny <laughs> about jerking off. You know what I mean? I know people are gonna attack me. For that, so like, oh, but he's a legend. Why are you, why are you disrespecting that man? Talking about jerking off and yada yada yada. But at the end of the day, um, that's that's just basically how you relate from mm. one person to the other. If yeah, we true. met, if we met at a club, it's the same conversation that mm. we're just gonna mm. have. Like if I didn't know you for the and we're we'll meeting for the first time, that's the kind of conversation that true. Yeah, yeah. Right, so so he brings in that element to the podcast. Yeah. So but yeah. I, I need to ask though, and uh, it, maybe it's, it's I just want to ask like a stereotyping. But your, feel free, man. Feel free. Your dreadlocks. How, how much weed do you smoke in your life, man? <laughs> <laughs> Interestingly and strangely, I've yeah. failed to smoke weed. You don't smoke but weed? But your lips no. look like you smoke weed, but man. But DEC doesn't watch our ish, bro. <laughs> no, I know that. <laughs> Trust me. From school, it's something yeah. that I, of course, when you're young, you try and this and that. Mm. Me and weed, we don't get along. Mm. I drink. I love my weed. You know, with the dreadlocks and the dark lips. Of course. If, if you listen you to You look like you smoke a lot of you, weed. If you listen to Pantum Conclude, it's what I was talking oh, about. Oh, yeah. Same yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, true. Like a dress and what people just conclude and say, ah, to conclude that, like, this guys like this. To period. conclude that. Nothing. Actually, I've met people. You are at the show, you're on stage. You're they ask you for a mess stick or for weed. No, just the German comes, shakes your hand. Nah, <laughs> shakes your hand. And then you feel <laughs> something. Then you do this, find it's above weed. <laughs> Because to him, just looking dreadlocks. at you, dreadlocks. Ah, German. In <laughs> Dude, this shit, this I don't shit do right this. Here, I don't do this. <laughs> ah, oh, okay. <laughs> just like that. Wow. <laughs> Reminded me of Kevin Hart. <laughs> when you're buying weed. The weed you bought last night, nigga. That ain't shit. <laughs> this weed right here, nigga. That's not Kevin Hart. That's Kate oh. Williams. <laughs> you who? Kate Williams. Kate Williams, yes. <laughs> 
Every time you go to buy weed, they tell you the one you bought last week is nothing. This one is stronger. This one Every is week is death. getting stronger. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you're sober as well. You don't take any no, alcohol. He, he says he I drinks take, alcohol. Oh, you did say? I didn't hear that. Sorry. I, take, I love my whiskey. I love my beer. Interesting. Depending on the day. And now See, a lot of water. That's why we're different again. A lot of water, yeah. And a now a lot of water. So what's with, uh, you mentioned Shiniza, you're now getting in machinery and stuff. Are yeah. you bringing investors to help you with the machinery? Or? Yes. A guy, no, actually, I've been buying the machinery slowly on my own. Yeah. But I'll bring in a liquid investor who's already there, who come and put in now the liquid part when all the assets are in. So you're going to uh, give so Vox a and uh, Vatra run for their money? Not really. I, I've targeted a very different audience. What audience is that? Uh, just the corporate world, just dealing in the five gallon things. Oh, okay. I don't want to go into the small ones, too much competition necessarily. I did experiments on everything. So after I looked at all this, I said, let me just go there. 18, uh, 18. It's 18. The, or yeah, 18, 18. It's a five gallon. Here we call it what? 18.9 liters. Okay, for the for the water cooler. Yeah, for the cooler. So you bring in dispensers, take them to the... A lot of gossip uh, happens around the water cooler in, office, in offices. Eh? I think that's what you should do with your adverts. Mm-hmm. And can we be can we be in your adverts? And what what does what your marketing budget look like? We need to be drinking Shiniza water. A lot of we, gossip we promise, happens. We, we promise Done to deal. have gossip. We Done promise deal. to have a dispenser on the Done episodes. Deal. Done yeah? deal. Done. We'll be moving with it, right? Yes. The okay. dispenser. We'll yeah. be transporting it. Yeah, we'll be having it like right here as we're talking. You know, there are yeah. those mini ones and those big ones. Oh, you have both? Yeah, we'll have both. Yeah. So it's still Shiniza water. On the name, uh, I want to keep title. it. I want to keep it... To, Lolo for now. Oh, so she needs the water is we, done with. We explain off camera. But you love it. Just like you'll explain the joking off. Oh, yes. No problem. Many time. <laughs> we can go for a drink. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you look like you're obsessed with it. Eh? No, no. I just, I just, I'm convinced. <laughs> I'm convinced you two niggas are lying. You two niggas are why, lying. Why would we? Why would we? I don't believe you. You cannot have sex with the same person <laughs> for 17 years. I know, I am no, you're like, I know because your wives are gonna watch this. That's why you're saying this shit. Impossible. Impossible. Ah, amazing. Who do who just one final question about artists nowadays? Who 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 do you feel is doing it for you right now in terms of the new school? Sampa the Great. Um I love what the Transition Chile one is doing mm. the way he started. I can see him growing in a very it's like now he's seeing exactly what he's supposed to do. He's found his own. Now. Yes, he's he's catching his own nicely. I think he will go very, very far. Then there's some ra- female rappers from the Copper Belt. They are not even out. I just see these short clips on Facebook. Yeah. I don't even know the name well, but there's a lot of talent there. A lot. Do you get to have upcoming artists sending you songs that they want you to listen to and maybe sign up oh, with course, you? Of course, of course. All they the time. Will, they always send to you, what do you advise? You tell them, okay, this one I think like this. If I were you, maybe I would do this. And if it's a no, I would tell you, ah, this one, no. Try something else or yeah. send another song. Just right. like that. Danny, man, thanks a lot for coming through. It's been more fun than thanks I expected family. because... Thank you. <sighs> I'm so happy to be as well. Elson? Yeah. Anything else? Nope. nope. It's that Z podcast. My name is K plus and the other guy. So and you know what? I think, I think calling you the other guy is just a cool thing to do, man. No, it just, don't it call me that. Right. No, no, I've got a name. All right, I'm someone's father. <laughs> don't, 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 don't disrespect me like that. <laughs> Eli, calling me the other guy. Bashi Eli. So I'm, yeah, I'm the to... rule of rubbing you the wrong way. Mm. Remember to click on subscribe. Elson is my name. Remember to click on subscribe. Danny, before we leave, is there something that you came thinking we're going to talk about and we haven't spoken no, we about didn't. that maybe you want to bring out right now as we go? Not really. You see, I every time I go for an interview, I yeah. leave myself very open to anything because right. I avoid preparing, knowing what I'll be asked. I'd rather That's good. I like that. Just go with it and it's easier to just express yourself. True. That is in you. So far, you've think, I think you've touched everything that is interesting to me, my music. You're a very easy life. person to respect. Yeah. I've gone you, you into, command respect. Yes. Thank you. I've gone into episodes where, okay, just like this, you never met the person before and you sit and you begin to talk and they are so standoffish and you're just sitting yeah. there and the energy is bad and you're just looking at it like, Dude, who put sand in your vagina? Why are you acting this way? <laughs> 
I don't, I, I, I don't get it. You, you, I, I can get into names of people that I just sit there. I'm like, dude, why, why did you? Why come? did I even come? Why, why did you come? Yeah, but yeah, I, yeah, I, 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 I liked this. There's very few interviews that I get pretty good energy, and you're one of those. Thank you, thank yeah. you. And as we go, and I like your team. You say what? I'm saying I like the team. Oh yeah, oh, the duo. Oh, yeah. the duo I make you look is, good. Yeah, he makes me look good. Well, you, it's like this. Ying and Yang. As we go, yeah, amazing then, song. I like how you've because uh, this song came out before the 2010 Africa mm-hmm. Cup, mm-hmm. and it's a song about uh, you thinking about your life going forward. Like, there's so much that could happen to you. You could mm-hmm. get sick with the playing around, mm-hmm. and you're wondering if you're even going to be able to watch the World, World Cup, Cup 2010. 2010. And then the World Cup 2010 happened, and the song was still a hit. Mm-hmm. So do you ever? <laughs> I know when you're performing, you you, you what, what what do you do now? Do you change the date? What, yeah, what, do, you do? Yeah, what, do, you, what do you do with that part? When performing, I just say uh, shingoko. I just put anything there, just you know, because it's an ongoing thing now. Yeah. But then it was different. Imagine this was like twenty zero three into four. Yeah. yeah. Twenty zero three. Twenty ten was like. It, it seems so far away. Oh. And then the World Cup 2010 came mm, and I was came. still on radio mm-hmm. in those days. And that song started trending again in 2010. Like much, we never much. thought we'd ever see the Africa Cup first of all happening in Africa. And we never thought we'd ever get to 2010 to sing that My, my, my phone has never jumped like that on that countdown. Oh, serious? I remember I was in Livingston. It was exactly midnight. Happy New Year 2010. Then the band started. Went yeah. on stage. When I came back, when I looked at my phone. It's like people. It, it's like it was a challenge. We told you we'll get so there. Far away. Yeah, wow. <laughs> dude, it was. Is there is there a song, your song that you performed, that you don't really like? Like in hindsight, you're like, yeah, I could have left that one out. I don't think so. Because before I pass a song to get into an album, I test it. So it, you find that. I'll, I'll listen to a song for over six months before it's given to the public. Serious? Yes. When, when I'm doing this album, by the time I'm giving an album, there are those songs that remain. Mm. You start perfecting them. Mm. So a song, if the first two months I like it, after two months I start skipping it, then I realize that this will be the same effect on the fans. Right. I put it aside. But if it goes four or five months, I'm still feeling it, it goes into my next project. Nice. Again, next project. Mm. So whenever I'm picking songs, I know songs that I'll, I'll, I'll relate to easily. And even when I pick them, do a show, I can tell that everyone is relating the same way. Mm. How, how old are you now, if I may ask? Oh, I'm 44 now. Only. Oh, yeah, the so same very, age as Kalinga. Mm. Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> so very soon it's going to be nowadays, Lord, I, if you got 50. I can't wait. Now imagine how big that show. That's the reason we even started the Danica Music Fest. Oh. Imagine there's that music fest so for, for, for 50 in a stadium. For those who don't understand Bemba or have never listened to the album, so on the song he talks about um, the life expectancy is dwindling because of so many things happening, disease and whatever. And if you get to the age of 50, you're going to be one of those people that look at like, mm-hmm. wow. They could even put you in your museum. You like, should thank God. Yeah. You are lucky. Some of us won't even get to that age and all that. And you're six years away. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll pass. Brian, you need, to, you need to tell this guy that because he doesn't like admitting his age. He likes to be younger than he actually is. Dude, old age is a blessing. <laughs> Embrace your age, bro. Do, do you hear what this man is saying? Dude, Dude, I'm, 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 I'm going to get to old age. I'm okay. going to bury you at some point in our, in our <laughs> friendship. Then I'll be singing that song. We'll miss you one day. Was that, was that like a, a true story? Like was that, was that a friend of yours or no, was just was, social commentary? It's through just a song? art. Just social commentary. It's art. Just art. But I was creative though. Thanks, man. Danny, you know, as such a legend, we could go all night That's when it comes said. to content. <sighs> you know, I didn't even play that song for a little bit before we leave. Ah, there it is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Till the next episode, remember to click on subscribe. Yeah. Subscribe is just uh, at the bottom of your screen right now. Click on that if you haven't yet. We need bigger numbers. As you can see, the bigger our, num- the bigger our numbers get, the bigger artists we can have. Wait, Danny. This episode. Thanks, Thanks a lot for coming it's through. It's been a pleasure. And we'll miss you when you leave. <laughs> At what don't sun and then I don't sun the alpha jantemba will miss you one day.
Beautiful.